The Artist's Toolkit, a training program for the artistic process, problems, background, and exercises. Hello and welcome, this is Katie Wenzel with The Artist's Toolkit, the training program for your artistic process. And today is all about collecting and building up reserves, in, the, in your case, image reserves. I have already mentioned how important your sketchbook is and that your sketchbook works as a reservoir, as a storage for images, materials, ideas, thoughts, for things that inspire you, that fascinate you and that enable you as an artist. And this kind of collection of images, texts, materials, of course also of music that inspires you is something that will make you stronger as an artist and that will make your art stronger. So in a way, these are your allies. They are your preserves. It's like a storage space or like a pantry, you know, where you store your strength, where you store vitamins for when times are scarce, uh, for times when you don't feel connected, when you feel like you're running dry, you have no ideas. And then this is your go to place. This is where you can rediscover, you know, recharge and find inspiration again. And this is why one job for the sketchbook is, or for you is, to collect visual sources. And the more good images and artworks you know, the more you will know or learn about, instinctively learn what works, what functions and what is strong. And when you need an idea or when you're not feeling well and when you, you lack inspiration, then you can always, always go through your sketchbook and I promise you it'll help. You know, you can also add this directly to your list of methods for activating your, your inspiration, which you, I hope you have pinned to your fridge. You know, that list about activating the right half of the brain, the list with vacuuming, going out on a walk, driving on the bus and so on, please add going through my sketchbook to the list because I promise it'll work. Very special and especially exciting image reservoirs are of course museums and shows or simply the world. But of course this is kind of diluted because there is so much stuff there also that does not inspire you, that bores you or that even has a negative effect on you or that is not inspiring at this point in time but maybe later. The crucial advantage of building up your personal image reservoir is of course that it is custom made for you by the only person who can really do this by yourself. And the longer you take care and the longer you build up your image reservoir, the better it is going to be. It's very much like your own private artistic wine cellar. You know, you collect it, you build it up, you let it sit there and mature, and it's only getting better all the time. The Artist's Toolkit. The most famous and well-known image reservoir in the history of art is probably the picture atlas Nemosini by A.B. Warburg. I don't know if you've heard of him, it's kind of special knowledge, but it's a great story also. A.B. Warburg was the son of a Jewish banker's family in Hamburg, so German-born in the beginning of the 20th century. And he developed a huge picture atlas trying to analyze families of images of pictures throughout the, the entire Western history of art. So it was a huge undertaking. And the story goes that A.B. Warburg, who was the firstborn and who was the heir to the bank, made a deal with his younger brother. And I don't know about historical fact, but it's a great story. So according to legend, A.B. Warburg made a deal with his brother saying, look, you can have a bank, but you buy me all the books I want for the rest of my life. And apparently they actually had some kind of deal in that direction um, because they kept it up even when the family was forced by the fascists to leave Germany. I mean, they were a Jewish family, so they were forced to flee. And A.B. Warburg went 
to Britain and he took his huge library with him to London, which is now the Warburg Institute. So his big project was collecting and grouping pictures. And not just pictures that inspired him, of course they were in there too, but pictures that were related, interrelated, groups of pictures, pictures about subjects. He looked at a lot of originals and um, photographed them in black and white or had them photographed. And he had some huge canvases or kind of walls made, you know, like he had scaffolding with black, material black fabric put on top and then he would pin the images to it and it wasn't just photographs from museums and so on you know it was also cutouts from magazines and from popular culture from all over the place and he would range and rearrange these images trying to find large lines of image traditions and you can imagine it was so it was this was a huge walk in image reservoir that was all about, you know, being related about groups and families. But as I said, they were a Jewish family and the fascists forced them to leave Germany. And of course, they also forced them to leave behind a lot of their belongings. And um, yes, the big picture atlas fell victim to this, to this forced uh, flight. So we, it's not... It doesn't exist in the original anymore. We only have photographs of it. But still, the idea has continued to fascinate people. I mean, artists, filmmakers, art historians, and many others. And in 2020, the Haus der Kultur und der Welt, the House of Cultures of the World in Germany, reconstructed the picture atlas and also had a very handsome catalog printed. So, please, please Google a B Warburg, like A B Y W A R B U R G, Nemosyne. Nemosyne was the mother of the Muses, the goddess of memory, and she spelled like M N E M O S Y N E. M N E M O S Y N E. Trust the Greeks to come up with something like that. So Google that and have a look at it. Warburg himself kind of concentrated on the Italian Renaissance and European antiquity and so on. And of course, you have no such limits. Of course, you can, and you can much more easily than Warburg, you have access to art from all over the world. And of course, you're not limited to art. And if you say now, well, then I can just scroll on Insta. No, please don't. It's not the same. You're scrolling on Insta is not collecting. It's not sifting. That's only rushing through. Collecting means to pick something, to discard and decide, to concentrate. So this is about choosing. This is about creating a concentrate. The whole thing is strong only because you discard what is not inspiring to you. You know, it's like making a salad. Of course, you throw out all the leaves which aren't looking good anymore. Or even more, it's like distilling something where you get rid of everything that is watery and uninteresting and in the end you have some kind of powerful liquid i don't know wh whether it is you know whether it is spirits or maybe maybe color you know concentrated distilled color or whatever you don't want a watery solution you want some kind of distilled spirit you want something strong exercise please for the next weeks keep looking for at least five pictures that you find fascinating for every week. They can come from all over the place. It can be photos, paintings, pictures of sculptures, film stills, whatever. Five pictures that move you for every week. And don't, you know, don't go looking for things that you find pleasing or beautiful. Go also looking for things that you find disgusting or repulsive. This is just about the intensity, the quality of re your reaction. It's not, the quality is not so important. It's the intensity is what counts. The important thing is that you respond. So keep those pictures. Go through catalogs. You know, go through your likes on Instagram. Go through the internet. But books are really good too. 
look through magazines, make your own photographs. So five pictures per week and please print them. You know, you don't have to print only one image per sheet of paper. You can put four or five images on one sheet, no problem there. So print them, get a binder and put everything in there. And please put also the names of artists, titles, possible places. And at best, also please put a few keywords, what you find interesting about these images and what you, know, what you find moving about this. Put it all in a binder or put it in your sketchbook. But the binder is better because it means you can rearrange the order and regroup them just like Warburg did. So collect. At the end of the year, you will have an additional reservoir of images and you will notice that your knowledge about art and about what you find fascinating has grown immensely. This is a, an exercise that you can repeat over and over again. It's good for every age, for every kind of qualification. And this kind of collection is a very good personal resource because it is a unique and individual reflection about what you like, about what is important to you. And of course, this will change over time. And, you know, and it will still be interesting to go back and see, aha, this used to interest me last year and now I don't care about it anymore or I care about it in a different way. This is also something that I very much warmly, very warmly recommend. Make it, you know, have your own binder and then continue with this exercise and let's just keep it going as long as you can because you will always be able to get back to it. The Artist's Toolkit So, to sum it up, you get a binder or you activate your sketchbook. You find five images for every week, images by different artists or from magazines or from adverts or whatever, images that you find exciting, moving, that you respond to, with titles, authors, names. You put all that in your binder with a short note about your reaction. And then, please try to group these images or, or, or find if they are in any way interrelated. Find if there is some kind of, you know, like red thread to what you find interesting. Check also your old sketchbooks. You know, that can also be quite enlightening. Go through your old sketchbooks, check it all for the big lines and then let's see what happens and what you find out. Enjoy! And of course, I have some reading recommendations also for this episode. So first of all, there is the catalog I mentioned, Haus der Kultur und der Welt Berlin, House of Cultures of the World Berlin and the Warburg Institute, edited by Roberto Ort and Axel Heil, like Roberto O-H-R-T and Axel A-X-E-L Heil, H-E-I-L. Avi Warburg, Picture Atlas Nemosyne, the original at Hatje Kanz, Hamburg, 2020. And the other title is, and that's more hands-on experimental, but I recommend it very much. It's something that everybody who wants to experiment as an artist should have, uh, should have in their bookshelf. It's Jason Fulford and Gregory Halpern. Jason Fulford, like F-U-L-F-O-R-D and Gregory Halpern, H-A-L-P-E-R-N. The Photographer's Playbook, 307 Assignments and Ideas, by Aperture, New York, 2014. The Photographer's Playbook, 307 Assignments and Ideas, by Aperture, New York, 2014. The Artist's Toolkit Conceptualized and presented by Kata Wenzel Assistance, Nodja Driller a project by European University Flensburg. <laughs>